Well, hello. Today we're going to be tying this Caddis Pupa Nymph. That's what I'd like to call it. And we'll be using a Umqua U202 size 14 hook. And we'll also be using a tungsten jig bead 2.8 millimeter. Uh, this fly can be tied in a variation of sizes from, I would, uh, the biggest I would go would be 12 and the smallest I would try to go would be 20. It could go smaller, but it just getting everything on there and the right size wire and feathers and everything. It's kind of difficult when you get them into smaller sizes. Uh, the body of the thread back there will be UTC 72 denier chartreuse. We'll be using brassy size uh, ultra silver wire. The tail will be tied with a little bit of pheasant tail. And then we'll also be needing just a tiny bit of this snow scud dark olive uh, dark olive dubbing. And also we'll need just a teeny bit of flash uh, for right up behind the head there. So let's just go ahead and get this in the vise. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pop this one out of the vise here, and we'll get a fresh hook and bead in the vise. Grab a hold of our bobbin over here and get started with our base thread. So just this nice UTC shark truce color. I like using the 72 denier because it makes it easier to tie things in and have more material to make wraps with. When you use a bigger, bulkier thread, you can have a tendency to use less wraps. Like you can't put a bunch on there, otherwise you will make the fly too bulky. So using the thinner thread, you can use more wraps and not make the fly near as bulky. So I got the turkey, not turkey, but I always use turkey too, but this is the pheasant tail. And I want to go... And make this just about like a, maybe a third of the length of that body. So I'm just going to pinch that off there. And then go ahead and wrap it in. Because it's difficult for me to get these on there with my fingers being as big as they are. Let's get that bead back a little bit. Trim off the excess. I'm going to wrap that on back. And then I'm going to grab my brassy wire. And I'm going to tie it on right on my side of the fly. And then I'm going to proceed to go all the way to the back here, making some nice little wraps. And I'm going to make touching wraps with this chartreuse thread coming back up out of that bend and back up to the front. Working it all the way up to the front and then going back probably two thirds of the body length. Trying to make a nice tapered shape of a body with just using the thread. That's pretty much the objective, is just to make a nice tapered shape. I had to go to the back to cover up a few more little spots there. So we'll go to there and then back to the front. And then we'll go back to here. And then we'll go back to the front. I think we're getting there. I'm going to go all the way to the back this time, just to give it another little wrap over the top. That's starting to look pretty good there to me. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and put a little whip finish on there so my thread doesn't flip off over around that round bead. I'll leave that. I'm going to go ahead and make some counter wraps with this brassy size wire, I'm trying to do uh, five to seven wraps. Because this is where the weight of this fly comes in, is giving it this little bit of silver wire along with that bead. And these, these also give it a nice little segmentation look, too. Now that we've made it up to the front, we'll go ahead and just catch that. Tighten up my bobbin a little bit. A couple in the front, a couple in the back. 
All right, well now we're going to go ahead and tie in our flash. If I can get it picked up. The easiest way to tie it in is to take it, fold it in half like this. Helps if you grab it by the ends on both with one set of fingers. Like that, and then we'll take and bring our thread right around back up to the top. And I snug that down just like Oh, don't want to go too far back. I'm going to stay up towards the front. And let them just kind of fly. I'm going to go ahead and grab just a tiny little pinch of this Snow Scud Dark Olive Dubbing. And I'm going to make the skinniest little dubbing noodle ever. And this is just to cover over some of that excess thread that's up here in the front. So we'll go right about there and then we'll start making our wraps to the front of this and end up right behind that bead, like right there. Don't want to go too much. And I'm going to catch one strand of this at a time for this flash. Just going to grab one and then pull it in just a little bit. And then I'm going to grab the other one and I'm going to pull, stretch it in. What I'm doing is I'm spreading these out so they're not right on top of one another. They're spread out a little bit, so it's kind of a V-shape up on top. I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess off there. Nice little collar it up there on the top with that chartreuse. A couple little wraps, and it's done. To finish this fly off, we need to get a hold of that cement. And that's our last finishing maneuver here. Is Using, I use the end of my whip finish tool to apply the UV glue here. Don't have the bodkin. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that real quick. But I'm going to put a little bit more back here on the back end of this fly. Need a couple more drops. It's starting to get there looking. There, now it's all ran down and around. Now we'll hit it with the light. Okay. Well, that there is the Caddis Pupa Nymph. My variation on it, kind of a little bit of fumble through there and all that, but that's just how it works. You can also tie this using turkey for the tail, which I've done several times before, and it still works just as well. Uh, yeah, and, you know, just, it's a nymph. It's meant to get down to the bottom, so don't be afraid to add, you know, sometimes a bigger bead than the size hook you're running. There's a lot of different weird Euro style setups that require a larger bead on the fly but that's that's just other things well thank you guys for watching liking and subscribing see you on the next one